Well, I want to thank everyone for coming out today, and especially uh, those that are here to support my campaign. I appreciate that very much, and I want to thank the media for being here today to carry the news, and I especially want to thank my wife, Mary, for all the times that she's supported me in these endeavors, and, and this is going to be a lot of work, but she's up for the task, and so am I. So thank you very much for being here. I love South Dakota, and I was blessed to grow up on a farm southwest of Madison. I learned a lot from hard work and uh, the work on our farm, and not only that, but the work that I did through high school, college, and law school. I worked at a variety of jobs, factory work, gas station work, bagging seed, janitor jobs, driving school bus, construction jobs, and my work at Southeastern Behavioral Health after college where I worked with children with autism. My wife's from, from West River, and thankfully we met in college. We have been blessed with eight kids, most of whom are here today, and 20 grandkids, and uh, we are very blessed. So I'm thankful that also one of my sons still farms the land where I grew up, and it's even more productive today than it was in the years gone by. And all the rest of the kids have developed careers and, and professions that uh, we're very proud of, so we're thankful for that as well. But we've had plenty of challenges just like everyone else. As we look back and as we look to the future, we're most thankful for the Lord's hand of blessing in our life. As South Dakotans, we cherish our communities, family farms, ranches, and small businesses. But our rights, liberties, and freedoms are currently under assault by the extreme progressive left. The axis of big tech, big business, big education, and Hollywood have changed the culture dramatically just in the past decade. Today, large multinational corporations are dictating how we should live, how our children are raised, and what values our children should be taught. Parental rights are being swept aside in favor of what big business, big tech, left-wing academics and universities, administrators, and Hollywood want, and our leaders just go along with it. Sadly, our own governor bowed to the pressure of big business behind closed doors and vetoed a bill that would have protected our daughters. And no, it was not a bad bill. This is a much greater problem than many of us realize. Our laws and culture are being dictated and enforced by woke corporations and their powerful lobbyists, even here in South Dakota. We have to resist these attacks on our families. The God-given rights of parents to determine what's right for their kids is being rejected in favor of radical agendas. Employees are being denied basic medical freedom and losing their jobs for refusing to consent to the Biden vaccine mandate without even having the option of receiving a medical or conscience exemption. Our governor should have been standing up to those Biden administration dictates on this particular issue like other governors are doing. But instead, uh, we're not protecting our workers. We're not protecting the men and women who serve in our National Guard. On September 10, I sent the governor a letter requesting that we have a special session to look into these issues. No response. We in South Dakota could have led the nation by calling a special session of the legislature to gather the facts and weed out the fiction on both sides of this issue concerning COVID, but there wasn't the political will or leadership to do that. Because of the pandemic, governors nationwide are gaining power through executive orders, circumventing the legislative process, and ignoring the will of the people. In this, our governors exhibited poor leadership by issuing executive orders, including mandatory stay-at-home orders, requiring CDC guidelines, pushing contact tracing, and then by misleading the public about what she actually did. We need a full-time governor who's focused on South Dakota, not on Washington, D.C., who makes decisions based on what's best for their constituents, not what is best for their career. South Dakota needs a governor who will not be swayed by the pressure of powerful business interests, but who will fight for our families, our freedoms, and our children. That's why today I'm announcing my candidacy for governor of the state of South Dakota. If elected, I will put South Dakotans first. Our people, our family farms, our ranches, our small businesses deserve to have their rights elevated over and above large, powerful corporate interests who neglect and diminish our constitutional rights and freedoms. The rights of the individual do not stop at the corporate boardroom. That's why I'm running. As governor, I'll fight to protect the innocence of our children, as governor, I'll answer to the people, not powerful interests who sway and pressure behind closed doors. As governor, I'll make sure that my administration is truly transparent, respecting the legislature, operating in the open, and not beholden to lobbyists. I pledge to be a governor focused on solving our problems in-state, 
rather than worrying about using the office as a stepping stone. As governor, I pledge to ensure that our government protects our liberties rather than restraining them. We really can lead the nation, not by testing the direction of the political wind each time there's a decision to be made, but by being principled right from the start. As governor, I pledge to you, I will put parents and families first, put small businesses first, put farmers and ranchers first, and put South Dakotans first. So I ask for your prayers and your support. I need your help to make ours a state where every voice is heard, where government is truly open, honest, and transparent, where our rights and liberties are protected, and where our children will have a brighter future ahead. Please go to my website, stevehowgard.com, and join our campaign for genuine leadership in South Dakota. Thank you, and God bless you, and may God bless the great state of South Dakota. I'll be glad to answer some questions. Uh, you face a uh, government with a historic fundraising hall and a national platform. Um, how, how do you expect to kind of launch a campaign um, to, to challenge her? Well, it's a grassroots campaign. And we, when you look at the numbers, you realize there are not that many people that vote in these primaries. So it's essential that people understand what the issues are and who stands by what principles. National campaign, you know, if, if I were asked the question uh, about a challenger, the first thing I would not say is how much money I have in the bank. That has nothing to do with it. That's not leadership. So my intention is that we'll, we'll see this grassroots effort, and it's already happening. I'm thankful for people all over the state that have called and texted and, and expressed their support and willingness to work. So that's what's going to happen. We're going to go door to door. We're going to go county by county, and we'll make this happen. The Gnome's recent polling number shows she's pretty strong. I mean, how do you overcome that? Well, that's, that's without polling against other people and other principles. So. I think once people understand what uh, the issues are and who stands by what principles, I think that'll make the world a difference. You talked a little bit about 1217 and uh, <coughs> the governor's veto of that. Was there another, any other kind of defining moments in her governorship so far that made you decide to get into the race? Well, my focus needs to be on my campaign and the positive things that we can do, because there are solutions to all these problems that the state government faces. And when, you know, over the course of my almost four decades of law practice, dealing with every aspect of state government, all throughout the court systems and all throughout the administrative systems, I understand what those issues are. And there really are solutions to a lot of problems. But it takes work and working together. So that's, that's where my focus is going to be. You were House Speaker. Uh, did, did that experience sort of prepare you for this run? you think you'd be doing this if you weren't House Speaker? I don't know if that uh, was necessarily the reason to step in this direction. I didn't, when I first got into state government, I was just interested in being part of the committees and answering questions, uh, asking questions, trying to draw the information out. I didn't have a goal in mind of leadership, but the doors just kept opening and there were things that needed to be done and opportunities presented themselves. So that's, that's where I see myself at this point in time. Uh, it's an opportunity to actually do the things that I know how to do and make a difference for the state of South Dakota. Got I really appreciate you being here today. Thanks very much. And, and whenever the media has questions, I'll be glad to answer those questions. So like I say, open, honest, transparent. There's no, nothing to be hidden. We just need to move ahead and do the best for the state of South Dakota. Thanks for being here.